get his thoughts on what my next guest has to say. Uh, leader of Reform UK and businessman Richard Tice joins us now. Good morning to you, Richard. Good morning to you, Julia. What um, an extraordinary day. I mean, I'm very glad I didn't bump into Michael Gove yesterday on the street. I, I, uh, I was just appalled by uh, his description of people being selfish if they'd made their personal choice not to have the jab quite extraordinary comments yeah and, and this this you and myself we, we're both double jabbed both support i mean hey the vaccine is our, our route out of this but there's a very big difference between encouraging people to get the jab um and and wanting people to be jabbed a, a double jab um and 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 coercing them and wagging your finger at them and telling them off and removing freedoms from them if they don't get the jab that is a very different thing isn't it the, michael gove said that you know he more people would have more freedom um but by getting the jab and basically if you are unable Able to do things in the autumn when they say they're going to introduce vaccine passports well that's your own fault um he says that's more freedom is, is that how you think of freedom no, i think look uh, as, as you say uh, we've been double jabbed you know we made the risk assessment and the vaccine taking the vaccine is the way out of the crisis but you know the, the way to uh, achieve the maximum vaccination is to encourage people with more information uh, not to sort of blackmail them and coerce them and the hypocrisy coming from a man who selfishly has kept hundreds of thousands of children cooped up at home, not able to attend lessons unnecessarily. The selfishness of a man who's kept hundreds of thousands of workers cooped up at home, including yourself, Julia, uh, totally unnecessarily when you've been jabbed and you've been pinged. Um, the selfishness of a man who uh, joined his own private test pilot scheme so that he personally didn't have to self-isolate after yes. he'd enjoyed the Champions League final. I find the hypocrisy of him and other government ministers quite extraordinary. I, I really do. You know, leadership, Julia, is about giving confidence and encouragement and motivation to a nation that, you know, we are now uh, mercifully uh, on top of this crisis. Of course, there will be ongoing issues for sure, but We've got to give the, the nation the confidence that we can live with it, we can deal with it, and we can move forward. And that's what we have to do. And to berate young people who've suffered the most uh, during this crisis, even though they actually, by and large, don't mercifully suffer seriously from the virus, I just found utterly extraordinary. Yeah, I, I find it particularly repellent, especially given that, I mean, last time I saw you was at a party uh, on Thursday night in, in Westminster. Um, Michael Gove was there, surrounded by people. OK, it was outdoors, most of the party. There were hundreds of people there, very, very up close and personal. Michael no. Gove, no, no mask. There was no requirement to be tested to go to this event. There was no vaccine passport required. He was perfectly happy to be surrounded by people up close, speaking to people, you know, just just a few inches away from his face. Perfectly happy for that. But but apparently you need to have a vaccine passport to do lots of things like, you know, to go to a lecture hall in the future to go to a nightclub uh, or, or other events or possibly a football match again outdoors um in the autumn i mean i'm sorry we've seen this throughout haven't we whether it's matt hancock whether it's uh you know a, a, anyone else there is always one rule for us and one rule for them what i can't understand is what is it that these tory cabinet ministers have against children and young people that they should make them uh, suffer the most continually you know, my own son was basically locked up, unable to attend any online lectures for a whole year at university. No compensation, no apologies, nothing. And um, to berate my daughter, who's making a judgment whether she does or doesn't want to have the vaccine, uh, you know, if she's 19, uh, you know, I just find utterly appalling. It's very lucky that uh, that party wasn't uh, tomorrow because I'd have had a word to say to Mr. Go. Um, yeah, I did. I've got to be honest with you. I didn't trust myself. Drink had been taken. I did not trust myself uh, to, to to be able to uh, stay remotely cordial. I, I'm so angry. Let, let's talk about, I mean, again, other aspects here. Um, another person who, again, I'm sure we should listen to too much, but he's on Radio 4. I mean, hey, you know, if you want to listen to Radio 4, guys, you know, you're going to get what you what you expect. But Professor Neil Ferguson, just 10 days ago, uh, he was predicting uh, that, uh, um, that, uh, that we were looking at an, an almost inevitable, his words, almost inevitable, 100,000 cases a day as a result of step four going ahead and people being allowed to meet in each other's homes and, and move more freely. And pretty much other than uh, the self-isolation rules and the, uh, uh, the, the the quarantining at the board is pretty much back to normal life. He predicted all Almost inevitable, 100,000 cases a day, even, he said, up to 200,000 cases a day. 
Nine days later, yesterday, he went back on the radio uh, and the BBC and he said uh, that after infections, by the way, have now almost halved, he said, I am positive but that by late September or October, we will have put the bulk of the pandemic behind us. Um, the cheek of the man, this is the man who's, who's totally faulty and proved wrong models. Uh, put us into lockdown in lockdown one again and again models from imperial college where he works have uh, have been the doom mongers throughout all this everything they have predicted has been wrong by a huge factor um he's changed his tune in nine days and and hasn't even been called out on it it's quite extraordinary isn't it? i mean with this modeling julia the thing is garbage in equals garbage out and we've seen that time and again from professor ferguson what actually really worries me most of all is to be honest if whenever he had made a prediction, you'd bet on the opposite. You'd be a yes. very rich person. I'm now really worried. <laughs> now I'm actually quite worried, Julia, because he's saying that the pandemic may be coming to an end. Um, and I think the reality is we know that we're going to have to live with this rolling crisis for a very long period of time. And, and that's actually how we should organise, uh, you know, our, our economic recovery, uh, our, our way out of this. So, no, I was actually quite concerned uh, when uh, Mr. Professor Ferguson said, oh, it's, it's all about to end. I mean, and as you say, why Radio 4 keep this guy coming on the radio and other sage scientists when they can just completely sort of unwittingly, quite happily, uh, diametrically reverse their predictions it is quite extraordinary. You know, mm -hmm. us taxpayers, we're all paying for these clowns. I mean, that's a key point. But also the fact that the arguments that are given by the many people who the doom mongers, whether it's Sage, Independent Sage, other advisors, uh, many media commentators, many others who, who seem to be, I mean, remarkably unhappy about cases going down quite extraordinarily. Um, and we know there's a lag and people, more people going into hospital and we know uh, more people are dying. But again, we would expect that to, uh, to, to start falling down. Everything we're told is going to wait to the end of this week because, of course, uh, we're, good at, we're likely to see more of the uh, effect of restrictions uh, easing uh, from last week so you know we're, we're going to wait and see it's a watching brief but everything right now is looking good but we're told that you know look you know there, there's the effect of the euros happening and then ending that the school holidays the vaccine rollout being so good um, uh, issues in in terms of, uh, uh, of of warmer weather and things like that but but again all of this uh, it was known these are all factors that should have been put in as part of the, you know, the, the assumptions being made for these uh, um, predictions. And yet it, it appears they weren't. What is the point of any computer model if it doesn't model things that we know will have an effect like school holidays? Well, as I said, Julia, garbage in equals garbage out. And, uh, you know, I just wouldn't pay these people uh, yeah. for, for the garbage they produce. But actually what we really need now, and I said it to government minister last week, is we need some much higher quality of information about, for example, the case numbers. If they told us what's the average age of the yeah. people currently getting COVID, you know, anecdotally, I suspect it's primarily teenagers and people in their early 20s, yeah. whether they're at school or, or at university. We shouldn't be worried about that. If young people who barely feel any some symptoms or maybe a sniffle or, or you know, a day feeling as though they might have a bit of a, if young people get the virus, they get natural antibodies, which doctors tell me is the best form of antibodies that you can get. So, you know, I think we need higher quality information. You know, every death is sad, of course, but actually rather than terrify the nation, let's remind the nation how many people die every single day, it will take 1600 in the UK, and compare that to the number of cancer deaths, the number of flu deaths, and the number of COVID deaths. Then you give confidence to people at a time when half the nation tragically is still terrified. Yeah, and, and that, that's the real worry, isn't most. it? Yeah, we're going to be talking to cancer specialist Carol Sikora later this hour about this, and he's saying you know, the, the, a fraction of the money that's being spent on dealing with the pandemic, if that was put into tackling cancer, we would save far, far, far more lives and far more younger lives as well. And, and it does seem so many in the nation almost want to cling on uh, to the pandemic. And, and ref again, I've always said it's, it's only Sage and the government who don't seem to trust uh, the vaccine rollout. Uh, and it has been a magnificent achievement. Um, really good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Richard Tice, leader of the Reform UK Party and a leading businessman and campaign against lockdowns. Uh,